having another a virtual chat with Quincy City Council President, Councilor at Large Nina Liang, to chat about the June first now City Council meeting. Nina, here we are in new month. It's a meteorological summer now, and we're still doing it this way. I I don't think that um, back in March when we started doing this over Zoom that you and I thought that we'd be doing this in June too. Not even close. No, if you told me that then, I would have said you're crazy. But yeah, exactly. Here we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you must be getting to be a pro with these uh, these Zoom city council meetings by now. Um, I hope so. I mean, I think honestly, everyone's doing a great job. Um, we had two different committee meetings now um, through Zoom as well, and I really commend both committee chairs in the work that they were doing because they had to also build in public hearings to it, um, and I think they did a great job. Yeah, I know you're right in the middle of the uh, budgetary process. Um, how's that going, by the way? Good. Um, we wrapped up most of the departments. There are some that we had to hold on um, just for some questions that we needed some follow-up items to. So uh, Council McCarthy, who's chair of finance committee, where the budget is being deliberated, um, is scheduling another meeting for that on June 15th. Oh, okay. So do you anticipate uh, maybe wrapping it up that night? I think so. I mean, so long as we get the materials that we need, um, you know, those are, again, the outstanding questions that are, are, are there to date. So, mm -hmm. Right. Any significant changes to the budget right now? No, we, again, you know, got a very, um, it was a level funded budget that we received from the administration and from all the departments. And so, you know, aside from some questions that we had here and there's some clarifying questions that we had for some line items in the way that they were worded, everything, you know, again, came in level funded. There were no increases on anything, not even the cost of living increase, um, mm -hmm. no new positions or anything like that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Uh, last night, there was an um, ordinance committee before the full council. Is that right? There was, yeah. So again, this is um, another counselor who was able to build in also a public hearing to uh, this virtual platform, which as you can see from just like the muting and unmuting experience we had um, when I just came on now, you know, it's, it's a lot to manage when you have 30 plus people on your screen that you have to toggle between. So Councilor Mahoney, who's chair of ordinance, did a great job with that. Um, she hosted the public hearing in ordinance committee and then held the ordinance committee meeting afterwards. Okay. And can you talk a little bit about what the ordinance is? Sure. So I have them all written down here. So the first one was the uh, re recodification of our city ordinances. So, you know, every time there is an ordinance change, something somewhere needs to be updated, you know, and I really commend the clerk's office as well as our assistant city clerk, um, you know, between Nikki and Jen Manning, they went through and essentially um, took all of the ordinance changes, even small things like, you know, changing one word here or there, everything that's been passed, they went through and updated the entire city ordinance document um, and it's quite extensive and again this is a matter of going through line by line what has been passed and you know from watching our previous council meetings that i could pass something with you today in ordinance and then you know a year from now or even months from now i go back to that changed version and then change it yet again right so now there's two changes and so on and so forth and so it's quite the undertaking it's something that the clerk um nicole crispo has been wanting to do for quite some time now. And again, it does take a really concerted effort from a lot of people. And so um, it's finally done and we passed this and we're going to move forward. Everything should be fully up to date um, and on the city's website in about one to two weeks already. And then at that point from now on, whenever there's any ordinance change, it will be done immediately so that everything is going to be um, the most up to date for people who want to reference our ordinances. But it is a huge undertaking. Um, I, I really cannot commend them enough for doing it, but it's, you know, it needs to get done every time there's a change you know what i mean we want to make sure that the public and the residents have access to the most up-to-date ordinances so i'm super excited that that passed and that we're moving on that um the second one was uh regarding a recreational vessel towing and so essentially what happens right now and, and um you know i don't think a lot of people will really notice it unless they really sort of on the water a bunch or sort of live near the water and you know in quincy most people live around 27 miles of shoreline that we have uh, there's a lot of abandoned vessels that you know oh, yeah. can create a lot of um, toxicity for the environment and then the process to get rid of them too is not the same as if you were towing let's say an abandoned vehicle on the road and so this ordinance regarding recreational vessels um, on the water really just codifies it so that it's the same process and it gives our police department a lot more flexibility on how they can manage that as well so i'm excited that we were able to address it because at the end of the day they cost the city a ton of money to go in, not just to tow those vehicles when they are abandoned, but the cleanup is really important for us as well. And we do take that as a priority, but that costs money, you know? And so we want to make sure that that process is um, really tight and that, you know, people aren't abandoning their, their vessels. And if they are, there is a very clear process on how we manage that. Um, so that was the second thing that we had discussed last night. And then the last thing was just an amendment 
on the small cell utilities um, ordinances that we have done a lot of work around in the past. Um, And this is what I just mentioned to you is like, we can, you know, make an amendment, we can make some changes to an ordinance and then we can come back a few months later or a year later and say, wait a minute, we forgot to add two words. Right. You know, and so that's what this was. We actually, we needed to add something in there about um, the type of company it was. And so we just added in two words um, to the ordinance and the ordinance itself didn't significantly change. It was just a matter of a couple of words that were missing. So those okay. are the three orders that we had discussed last night. Okay, a lot of it sounds like just uh, tidying up uh, old business uh, and great for the city clerk. They have, uh, you know, I guess the downtime to be able to do that meticulous work um, given the the, uh, the pandemic that we're in. So silver lining, right? Yeah, no, they've been, I've been- they, I know that they've been working on it for quite some time too. And so it's just, I think at this point, a matter of, um, again, it, this is the process it needs to go through to get approved for us to do it. Yeah. Um, but I'm happy that we were able finally to get this meeting on the books and get it passed because yeah. again, it's something they've been working on and they've been wanting to get done for quite some time. And also, you know, people should keep in mind ord- ordinances are essentially city laws. So you want to be mm-hmm. able to enforce them and you don't want them to be challenged, right? If, if you're exactly. Trying to, yeah. Yeah. And we want people to have the most up-to-date version of that. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. let's talk about the, the full council meeting, if we can. A couple of resolutions that were of interest I saw from Councillor Pramucci. Yes, uh, so the first one on here is the resolve to visit um, Quincy District Court and having that be uh, a possible use of, uh, of city property. And so essentially what happens is, and the way he explains, he has a lot of experience um, as an attorney as well right. with the courts. And I'm sure that you've been up to date and keeping in touch with, you know, what's opened and what's not opened. And given, you know, this is a resource that we have here in the city, we want the health department, um, we want Ruth and the health department to really coordinate and reach out to them and see like, is this a resource that we can share in the interim before things really sort of come back online? You know, I think this speaks to what you and I have been talking about this whole time where, you know, this community, you know, organizations, private or public, or just community organizations and resident run organizations, you know, ultimately we're all here to try to do what we can to support each other. Um, and that includes providing space and resources and monetary resources and, you know, so on and so forth. And this is sort of um, falling along that same line where, you know, Council Pamuchi had a really good idea. It's like, this is a resource we have here in the city. You know, let's visit it and see what we can do to, you know, offer that to other folks who might need it. So mm-hmm. I'm really excited that he's still keeping his eye on that and still trying to explore and get creative on what we can do and what other organizations here in the city can do as well to provide support because we aren't out of it quite yet. You know, we're, we're doing this phased approach, which is great. And I'm excited to see what happens um, with the second phase, but you know, until I guess we go back to whatever the new normal is, it's, it's nice um, to know, you know, again, there's a number of people who are still looking at getting creative. Yeah. Has there been any um, input uh, or reaction from the uh, the court uh, officials at all as to as to how that might work? Not that I've heard of yet. Okay. No, um, not since so the resolve did pass last night, but you know since then I hadn't heard anything um, through today yet. Not yet. Okay, and the second one regarding the uh, Father Bill's relocation. Yeah, it's just again to get an update. I mean, obviously, I think anything that they had planned um, for their own. I mean, they are you know at the end of the day a business, and they need to make sure that they're moving along as well. Um, you know, in junction with, with our plans and what we're looking to do for the new, um, the new complex over there for the public safety headquarters. And so I know that they had been planning things for quite some time, but like everyone else, you know, all of the plans kind of just went to pot in March. And so, um, you know, I, Councilor Pamucci and I've been talking to him a little bit about this. We just want an update. We sort of want to know where things stand right now, okay. not just with that project, but, you know, the project in its entirety, you know, so not just the location for all the bills, but, you know, the animal shelter is also impacted over there yep. as well. Um, and really, we just want to, I mean, the, I think what you can see in this as well is that when the world stops, um, the folks who work out of that public safety headquarters area right now cannot stop, you know, right. and so with all the different moving parts right now, with this phase reopening, I think it's just important for not just us, but all the residents and people who are tuning in at home, um, just, you know, just get an update and see where we are right now and sort of what the plans are moving forward. You know, when will the construction start? You know, um, are we still looking at the same timeline? Are we still looking at the same costs? You know, sort of just, again, with everything being flipped upside down, you know, things are impacted and we just right. want to make a temperature check as to see how much. Okay, so update from the administration on that you're mm-hmm. talking about? Okay. Yeah, and public buildings too would be involved in that as well. Sure. And would Father Bills also be part of that? I mean, would they be asked to come in as well? I would hope so. Yeah. As as of right now, that I I think that everybody who's impacted in that area, we would want to know sort of what's going on and again where everyone stands right now. Sure. 
Uh, the mayor told me this morning that uh, City Hall will be opening up to the public um, June 8th. Um, any thought as to when the council might return to the chambers? Yeah, I mean, I could see us wanting to do potentially the last meeting, the June 15th meeting yep. um, in person. But, you know, I've had I, and I'm really grateful because I every time I try to make a decision on this, I do work with every single one of my colleagues to get their input as well as the clerk's office. And that's how I've been able to make the decisions around doing it remotely um, mm -hmm. is by, you know, talking to all of them and, and sort of getting their input and getting their advice on what they want to see happen. So as of right now, you know, the plan is to, you know, meet over Zoom again, Council McCarthy has the the last budget hearing set for that night and um, i think because we had set that about a week ago our our thoughts were you know let's be safe and do this over zoom we know the platform we know how we can do it we know how we can engage the public um should that change we'll certainly make sure to post that and advertise it but mm -hmm. it really is a matter of getting you know everyone's input before that decision is made so mm -hmm. as of right now you know again we're comfortable over zoom let's take it slowly um this is a platform that we're all comfortable with it's a platform that works because of QA TV, frankly, you know, being able to, to show it live um, and have people call in. And so, you know, again, if we can do this in the safest way possible, um, yeah. you know, then that's what we'll do. Curious, Nia, do you think, um, you know, post pandemic, um, can these type of virtual, I don't know, community meetings be held perhaps we might be able to reach out to more people who might not normally come to a, you know, a community center or a school for a nighttime meeting? We've been talking about that, actually, all of the counselors and myself, we've, yeah. um, you know, the last two months we've been talking about how, you know, this is a great new way to meet and to convene and discuss things um, for people who are maybe commuting home from work, you mm -hmm. know, and they can call in or listen in on their phone or yeah. people who, um, you know, can't get childcare, but they can, again, tune in, you know, because they're at home or if they're still at work, they can tune in as well. And so it just, you're absolutely right. It creates such a, an expansive opportunity for people to participate the way that they couldn't before. Um, and again, you know, I think before, because you guys were showing it on QA TV, people still had that opportunity to tune in, but they had to, you know, watch it on the local TV station versus now they can just call into the Zoom number. Mm -hmm. um, I think with formal meetings, we'll have to see what happens with um, Governor Baker's law around that. You know, again, it was the special legislation that was created for us to be able to meet over Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, but if that changes when we go back, then that's something we have to look at. But for informal community meetings, I think it's a great platform and something we should definitely explore. Yeah, it just, you know, it got me thinking back to when you were first elected. That was one of your main platforms was, you know, reaching out to the community and getting input and having community involvement and making sure everybody's kind of having their voices heard. So this just seems like a perfect way to, to see, to do that. Yeah, talk about a silver lining when things are um, really challenging, right? Yeah, <laughs> this yeah, is, exactly. It's been really neat to see how many people, because you can see, right, when, when you're on the Zoom call, um, you do have the ability to see, you know, the number of participants and who's calling in and when they're calling in. Um, and every meeting we've had, Joe, every single meeting we've had, we've had participants from the public in the meeting, which is great, you know, because sometimes when we're in the chamber and we're meeting in the chamber, again, folks are watching at home on QA TV, and I know that. So, you know, they're sitting at home rather than coming to the chambers. Mm -hmm. But um, it's, it's really nice to see, like, you know, active participants in the Zoom uh, when we're having our meetings. And so I really do appreciate that people are taking the time to do that. Yeah, I, absolutely. You know, and it's it, it also it gets me thinking about how how important the census is and why that's important to be heard and to be counted and to be verified. Yes, a hundred percent. Um, and this especially right now, and I've been thinking about that when we were going through the budget and talking about state aid and federal aid and you know how much we really need to to, to rely on that so mm -hmm. that we don't have to push that off on local receipts and residential taxes. You know and. Then that get me, gets me back to thinking, well, you know, we can only ask for so much based off of our population. And for all those who are tuning in, Joe, I appreciate you bringing that up, but all those who are tuning in, please, please go and fill out your census. Remind your friends, remind your loved ones to fill it out. Um, honestly, everything we get here in Quincy um, and the amount of resources that we get, it's, it's based off of you being counted, you know, yeah. so... Um, a great example of that is when our fire department was able to get those specialized washing machines to wash their equipment um, because of the exposure to smoke and the carcinogens and, you know, their higher chances of getting cancer. Those washing machines cost millions of dollars, you know, that we didn't have to go to the taxpayers for um, because we got the grant, you know, and that's, again, based off of the population size and how many firefighters we need. So it all, you know, does come back here locally. Um, and you're absolutely right. The next 10 years of funding, I mean, 10 years, you know, we're talking, we're not talking the next eight months of funding and we'll get right. back to it later. Like the next 10 years of funding 
for this city is going to be based off of every single person at home going and filling out that census. Yep. So yeah, absolutely. Um, yep. well, um, I appreciate yep. you getting, you know, getting us up on that soapbox for a minute because it yep. it's really important. It really is. Well, yeah, and I understand that too. Um, you know, great, great examples are the, the, the funds that have been set aside to help the hospitality workers, um, um, the Quincy, you know, relief fund. Um, I mean, a myriad of, of things that we can refer to that were Our schools, you know, the, the schools that we've gotten, like the, 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 the building of the new schools that we've gotten across the city yeah. and fixing them, putting the new boilers in and taking the space. I mean, all of it. You're right. right. Yeah. Uh, the deadline has been extended to um, October and it's uh, 2020 census.gov. Really simple. Nina, since last we talked, um, of course, uh, the events that have unfolded regarding George Floyd and the situation in Minneapolis um, are hitting very close to home. Um, and I did, you know, want to ask your um, your reaction to that. I know that there's a, a rally planned in Quincy uh, this evening. We're speaking on uh, on Tuesday. Um, you know, do you guys, guess your overall feelings about what's going on with race relations? Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm heartbroken. I, I think um, above all else, you know, I mean, I have my waves of being infuriated and, and frustrated and angry and um, upset. And, and I think at the end of the day, it's just, I'm just, I'm heartbroken that, um, you know, our friends and our family members in the black community continue to face these injustices. You know, I cannot, even as a person of color, I cannot ever sit here and claim to admit that I know what they're going through and know how they feel. And I think it's really important people toss around the term ally a lot. And I think it's really important, you know, if we do claim to be allies, to stop and to listen, you know, and, and to to really take in um, what it is that we can do, but not be presumptive about that and not assert what we think we should do. You know, I think it's really important that we do listen and that we come together as a community. And, you know, to your point, what you were saying about tonight, you know, that again, I'm talking to you on, on Tuesday, June 2nd right now. And you know, it's it's meant to be a candlelight vigil tonight. There are some members of the community who I think, um, and again, I'm not trying to speak on their behalf. This is just from what I've gathered in my conversations. They wanted to bring the community together and have, you know, just this moment of remembering and, and you know, showing respect to George Floyd and really all of the George Floyds, right, that, that have experienced this injustice. And have a, a space and a time for the community to come together, you know, and, and be together with this. And um, I think it's important. I think it's important that we have this space. I think it's important that we have this outlet. And I think it's really important for a city our size and for such a diverse community to show that we can come together and be together through this. You know, we're going to bring our own experiences. We're bringing our own feelings, you know, to this kind of gathering. But the fact that we can come together as a community and be together through all of it um, is really important. So I'm, I'm really glad that these community members put this together. Um, again, it's meant to be a memorial. It's meant to be a vigil, you know, not a rally, not a protest, um, but really just a time for the community to have that space, you know, to come together and be here for each other. I think that's really important. Yeah. How, how do you kind of view, um, you know, race relations in the city over kind of overall, I guess? I mean, I think, you know, we are not immune to anything, mm -hmm. you know, um, I've had a, quite a lot of people reach out and ask with everything that was going around around COVID-19 and, you know, all the racism that was being lobbied towards the Asian American community. Mm -hmm. And now with this, and, you know, I, I don't think that as a city, specifically one that is so close to Boston, um, is immune to anything, you mm -hmm. know, and then you look out and you think, okay, but we've not had any of those incidences with police here. Um, and I think that, that doesn't just happen on its own. You know, it, again, we don't have some weird bubble around us where that just magically doesn't happen. It happens intentionally. You know, it happens intentionally in our police department that, that, that those incidents don't happen. You know, it's, it's a really intentional effort on all of our first responders side, as well as the community and the elected officials who really work to make sure that we are a welcoming community. You know, that's not to say that there aren't one-off incidences. There absolutely are. Um, but again, I think it's how we then react to that that really sends that strong message. You know, I was talking to a parent who, um, unfortunately, not too long ago in the you know the recent months with the pandemic, um, had some really uh, really just disgusting racial comments that were thrown to her kids. You know, who are Asian American, and and then it made me think back. You know, 25 years ago when I experienced that here in Quincy. You know, and Again, so there are these one-off incidents, right? But it's how, how do we address that? You know, how do, we, how do we respond to that? And that response is really important. And to hear and to find out that the police responded immediately to find out, you know, who was 
you know, going out and targeting these kids, that was important, right? That kind of response is important. Um, Finding out that, you know, they are going to take this even a step further and talk to the kids in the schools. That's another step, you know? So again, like it's, it's important to acknowledge when it happens. It's important to think about um, how we are responding, you know, as a community. Um, It is important to also acknowledge that, again, we don't live in a bubble, right? It's not that it doesn't happen here in the city. It's very intentional that we try, that we try to address it when it does happen. And it's very intentional to try to create a space in this city where that does not happen, where these injustices don't happen. And so I think it's something that we need to make sure we're always being very front of mind with. Um, And I think, you know, again, just because it doesn't happen here in the city, the way it happens in other cities doesn't mean that we can't be a part of that response. Mm -hmm. Appreciate your time. Well, I can't say any more. It was well said. Appreciate your time, Nina. No, of course. I know, again, you know, everyone... um, takes these issues very personally. And, and I, I appreciate that people um, make it, you know, so close to home for them. And I think, again, that's why it's important that we have this space to talk. Um, and I appreciate you giving me the space to talk about it too, Joe. I really do. Sure. If folks would like to reach out um, to you, what's some good ways to do that? Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty active on Facebook. That's it. It's always tethered to my phone, all the time, which is always tethered to me. So um, I encourage folks to reach out, you know, on Facebook, if they'd like us to see and Quincy, um, or they can call me, you know, anytime or text me anytime. The number is 617-657-0837. Um, or they can email me and Liang at quincyma.gov. And they can find all that on the website as well. But um, yeah, myself and my colleagues, all of us have our numbers on the city's website, they can go down to the city council page. And that gets to every single one of our cell phones, which is attached to us. So I do encourage people to reach out to, um, to myself and my fellow colleagues as well. I know that, you know, that's the pa- favorite part of our job really is to be able to talk with folks. So. Yep. And I can attest personally, I've reached out to all of them and they have all responded immediately and, and positively. So it's been, you're one of our favorites, Joe. I mean, how could we not? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll take that for the team here at QA TV. Absolutely. Uh, the team effort. <laughs> Good to see you, Nina. Thank you so much. You too. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.